Good afternoon. It is currently 1 p.m. in Samoa and 12 p.m. in American Samoa. This is the latest information on developing tropical cyclone Evan. The first graphic shows the estimated position of the center of circulation from the U.S. Joint Typhoon Warning Center, and they currently have the center just to the south of the island of Upolu, and it looks like the forecast is calling for the storm to continue meandering closer toward Pago Pago, American Samoa, before the storm begins to take a turn back toward the southwest. The JTWC is also estimating the peak winds to be near 65 knots at this time, which now makes this cyclone the equivalent of a Category 1 hurricane or typhoon, and more strengthening is in the forecast. As a matter of fact, they are forecasting a peak intensity of 105 knots as the storm begins to move away from the islands. But more important than anything, look at how slow the forward rate of speed is expected to be over the next one to two and perhaps even three days. We're still calling for the storm to only meander and be nearly stationary as the steering currents begin to break down. So both American Samoa and Samoa will be heavily impacted by this storm for an extended duration and potentially longer than a lot of people are used to when it comes to tropical cyclones. And the storm will be intensifying as the storm remains in the area. So we're going to be talking about very high precipitation totals. There will be the risk of flooding, especially in some of the higher terrain. And of course, with the risk of a developing and strengthening tropical cyclone, you will also have the risk of storm surge immediately near the coastline. So this storm is definitely turning into quite an event for the Samoas. And not only there, but we will also have to watch the storm for interest out across Fiji as the latest forecast track, at least from the JTWC, is placing the storm in your neck of the woods by the 16th and 17th. In addition, we see fairly good agreement between the JTWC track and the track that's being put out by the official source for tropical cyclone information in the South Pacific, that being the Fiji Meteorological Service. They also have the storm meandering near the Samoas for quite some time, while also intensifying into a Category 3 cyclone, and their forecast track also takes the storm in the general direction of Fiji in the extended range. We're also keeping a very close watch on some of the local forecasts being put out by the local offices of the Southern Pacific. The first here is the latest update from the Samoa Meteorological Services, and currently the area is under a hurricane watch. As for the forecast for Savai, they are expecting west to southwest winds at 50 to 70 miles per hour with higher gusts at times, mainly in exposed locations where the wind is not so obstructed. Visibility, of course, will be poor as you're dealing with very heavy rainfall and strong winds. Storm surge along the coast, as mentioned before, will be as high as 10 to 12 feet. For Apolu, we are expecting the winds to be west to northwest at 50 to 70 miles per hour with higher gusts. And once again, you will be experiencing poor visibility with heavy rainfall, surge of 10 to 12 feet. As we transition over to the American Samoa Weather Office, we see that a hurricane watch is in effect, a storm warning is in effect, and also a high surf advisory is in place. The strongest winds and the worst weather is still expected to occur Thursday night locally and they are expecting occasional showers, locally heavy rainfall at times, with isolated thunderstorms. And you see right there, the northwest winds are expected to be 75 to 85 miles per hour, which is the equivalent of a Category 1 hurricane. Now, I will emphasize once again, much like I did in the video yesterday, that the conditions across American Samoa will greatly depend on the intensity and the position of the cyclone at that time, and some of those details are still somewhat unclear. However, we are fairly certain that you will be experiencing tropical cyclone conditions, and they could be a little better or a little worse, depending on some of those specifics that will become a little bit more clear over the next 24 hours. Also, as we just saw with the forecast tracks, the storm may meander a little bit longer than we first thought, and as you can see, as we work our way into Friday and Friday night, the official forecast is still calling for thunderstorms and winds in excess of 50 to 60 miles per hour. And depending on how long it takes for the steering currents to gain some strength, the storm could still easily be in your very close vicinity. The following is a microwave satellite pass taken of Cyclone Evan roughly six hours ago. And even if the infrared and visible satellites do not depict it, the microwave satellite can easily tell you if a eye or eye wall like feature is developing. And we certainly saw that six hours ago just to the south of American Samoa. And we've had an updated ASCAT pass roughly two hours ago. And if you look at some of the surface estimated wind barbs, you can get the overall idea that the circulation is just to the south of the island.
Sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words and the latest visible satellite imagery that we've received within the past 30 to 45 minutes can be a strong testament to that idea. We can see that the storm is continuing to organize. In fact, Tropical Cyclone 4P, or Evan, looks about as healthy as it has been ever since it formed, and the eye is also becoming present on this imagery as well. Also, in addition to the eye wall-like feature developing on satellite imagery, you still get the overall idea that the structure of the storm is improving even in the outflow pattern and this is a good sign that the vertical wind shear remains light so conditions are still favorable for additional strengthening. What you're looking at now is the animated version of the visible satellite and as we switch over to the enhanced infrared you can still see that very strong convection and thunderstorms are developing near and just to the immediate northwest of the center of circulation and some of the higher terrain especially the western and northern slopes are probably experiencing the highest rainfall totals at this time as the orographic lift is helping to enhance the rainfall even further as you go higher up in elevation it's also interesting to note that it looks like maybe some of the mountains of Samoa are impacting the inner core just a little bit. You can see that the strongest convection is struggling at least somewhat to fully wrap around the eastern and southern side of the eye, but over time the storm is still expected to drift a little bit more toward the east, and if it moves away from some of the higher mountain tops, then it may be able to organize a little bit easier. Also across American Samoa, you haven't been highly impacted by some of the heaviest rainfall just yet, but some of the worst weather is slowly working its way closer to your location. This is simply a different color representation of the enhanced infrared satellite and this is also giving us a better idea as to where the center of circulation is in relation to some of the stronger weather and convective activity and once again the higher convection and storms are located just to the northwest of the center at this time but over the next 24 to 48 hours some of the stronger convection should also begin to wrap fully around that developing eye. We have not received any observations from Samoa within the last couple of hours, but the latest observation as of 1900 Zulu time indicated that they were already experiencing very heavy rainfall with visibility less than one mile, and also the pressure was down to 991 hectopascals, and we fully expect the pressure to continue to lower with time. What you're now looking at is a long-term animation of the precipitable water out across the southern Pacific, and sometimes this can give you a better idea as to how quickly or slowly a tropical cyclone is organizing, and you can definitely get the idea, especially toward the end of the animation, that Cyclone Evan is continuing to become better defined. In yesterday's video, we already talked about the very warm sea surface temperatures, which are conducive for additional tropical cyclone strengthening. And what's also more concerning is that the vertical wind shear profile also appears to be very conducive for additional development. What you're looking at is a look at the South Pacific vertical wind shear in the mid to upper layers of the atmosphere. You can see Fiji to the southwest, our strengthening cyclone, and the Samoa is right in the middle. But more importantly, as we look at the mid to upper level atmospheric wind streamlines, you can see that we have a clockwise upper level ridge, and this upper level ridge is going to be very favorable for this tropical cyclone, especially as the cyclone continues to move closer toward the center of the ridge as it drifts toward American Samoa. Underneath this area, vertical wind shear profiles are less than 10 to 15 knots. Combine that with very warm waters, and this is a good recipe for additional intensification into at least a Category 2 or possibly even a Category 3 equivalent hurricane or typhoon. In terms of the steering, the cyclone is currently being guided toward the east by a mid-level to upper-level equatorial ridge centered to the northwest of the storm and to the northwest of Fiji, but over time the upper-level low out across the Coral Sea will continue to amplify and strengthen, and a direct result of this upper-level low intensifying will be for there to be more pronounced ridging developing just to the north of New Zealand. The flow around this ridge will be clockwise and therefore mid to upper level easterlies will return to the area immediately to the south of Samoa. This will allow the easterlies to also capture the tropical cyclone after it meanders around Samoa for an additional few days. And as we can see based on the latest ECMWF model forecast, the European shows the storm being captured by the northeast to southwest flow and by day four, the storm is in the general proximity to Fiji and as we go into day five, in day six, the storm is continuing to move toward the southwest. As we zoom in to the latest ECMWF forecast and overlay some of the surface winds in knots, you can see that initially the European model is showing the tropical cyclone, but the European is underrating the strength of the storm 
the maximum winds that you see on this graphic are indicative of 30 to 35 knots, but as we already saw based on the latest JTWC advisory, the maximum sustained winds are already at least 65 knots. So please keep that in mind as we advance the forecast. Either way, we see that the European is showing the storm continuing to drift more so toward the east, and as we go into the 24-hour forecast time frame, it is situated between Samoa and American Samoa. As we continue to move through the forecast model solution, you can see that even by 48 hours, the storm is still expected to be directly over Samoa, so this is going to be a long duration event, and the model is still showing more in the way of intensification as the storm begins to finally leave the island chain within two to three days. Furthermore, the European model is showing more in the way of a stronger storm by the time it reaches the general area of Fiji in four to four and a half days, and this is a spike in the intensity forecast compared to what we saw from this model roughly 12 to 24 hours ago. Furthermore, the ECMWF solution that we just viewed is now more in line with the GFS, which has been fairly consistent for the past model cycles, past several model cycles, I should say, and the latest GFS run, valid as of 12Z, is showing the storm continuing to intensify as it meanders closer toward American Samoa. This still appears to be a more realistic solution because the GFS is handling the current intensity of the storm better than the European is, and we see a very well-defined storm sitting just off the coastline as far out as within the next 48 to 54 hours, and even as we go into 60 hours in advance, we're still talking about very strong winds, especially along the southern coast. Furthermore, the GFS is still showing a very intense cyclone as we go three and four days into the future, and some of the bigger model disagreement comes in the four-day time frame. As we saw just a moment ago, the European is taking the storm more toward the southwest, toward Fiji, whereas this latest run from the GFS is a little bit more toward the east, and it's showing a curvature a little quicker, and this would be very beneficial for interest out across the nation there. However, this is still very subject to change, and we have a lot of model disagreement this far in advance, which is to be expected. So for all interests that are tuning in from Samoa, if you happen to have power, please stay indoors and hunker down and be prepared to stay indoors for at least the next couple of days as this will be a very slow moving system. For those out across American Samoa, you have not received much in the way of very hazardous weather just yet. However, you can expect the coastal storm surge to slowly be on the rise and you can also expect the rainfall and winds to steadily increase as the center of circulation slowly approaches. For interest out across Fiji, you still have a few days of preparation time in the event that the storm does directly impact you, so please take advantage of that, and hopefully we can just pray that the storm will stay just to the east, which is certainly a very plausible scenario at this time. We're going to keep tabs on this very closely for you here at 28storms.com slash cyclone. Don't forget to bookmark the page, and you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at 28cyclones. In addition to following our latest updates on Twitter, you can check that out at twitter.com slash 28cyclones.